biggest things but never get them laid He found another bottle till the pain went away Rescue was his friend, he didn't know the mother Hey what's going on guys, it is Psycho or Sam here and welcome back to my channel guys and today I'm very excited to bring you guys my brand new asset and in this video I'm basically going to show you how it works and how you can actually set it up on your game. Uh, by the way this is going to be for free, it's open source and it's going to be released on my website and perhaps it's going to be released on the asset store too. I am going to publish or at least uh, submit it to the asset store but if it gets accepted obviously it's going to be released. Otherwise, I'm not really gonna care. So it's gonna be on my website, non-delete. So you're gonna be able to find the link in the description down below. You're just gonna, it's gonna ask you to register, which is really, really simple. And then you're gonna be able to download it. So that's pretty much it. And before we start, I just wanna run you through the scene real quick. So I have a very basic scene. It's, there's just a directional light, there's a ground and there's a skybox. None of these are actually necessary for the script to work. So it's going to be compatible with any script that you download through the asset store that you create by yourself. And you're also going to be able to use any player script at all. So this is not going to interfere with the player movement. It's simply just going to use the uh, its own system pretty much. So uh, I want to get started by using the standard assets folder that is created by Unity. So we're going to import or actually this has automatically imported the characters from the standard assets so if you want to use the rigid body fps controller which i am going to use for my example you can always just search for it uh rigid body fps controller drag and drop it inside of your scene and that's pretty much it so now you have a player in your scene and i just want to increase the height a little bit for the uh the capsule collider you're not forced to do it but i do recommend you because it's going to be a little bit more realistic with the height of the player. And speaking of which, I also want to call this player. There we go. And um, once again, I just have a plane, which is a ground and it's called ground two. And then I just have a directional light. So these are not required except for the ground, because obviously you want your player to be standing on something. Maybe you don't. <laughs> Maybe you have a puzzle game that you just fall down in case you can't hook an object. So that should be fine as well. And um, let's see here. I just want to drag this to the top so that I can keep an eye out for that. And that is pretty much it. So I want to go ahead and start by creating the, a new cube. So I just want to add a new 3D cube into my scene. And this is going to be what I call a uh, hook holder. So this is going to be used as something that is going to hold the hook while it's in idle status meaning when we are not firing it and when it's returning from being fired. So uh, after you hook it, after you hook a object and you climb it up, you know, it's obviously going to return to a position and it's going to be the position. So the important part here is that you just have to place the cube pretty much where you want your hook to be. And this doesn't have to be perfect right now, so you can always come back and edit it. But right now I just want to have it like this. And I am also going to call this hook holder just to make sure that I don't forget what this is for. And very important note, box collider, you want to make sure that it's in is trigger. So this little checkbox here, you just want to check it. There we go. So that's the only important part. Now, the most important part perhaps, you want to use, you want to add your hook object to the scene. So I'm going to be using a sphere as a hook that is going to actually fly through the map when I fire it. And so I'm just going to add a 3D sphere, just like I did with the cube. And this doesn't have to be placed autom uh, like perfectly. Uh, you can just place it pretty much wherever you want. Uh, the script itself is going to take care of its positioning and the positioning of the hook holder as well. So you don't really have to move any of the objects. You don't want them. You don't have to make them a child object of another parent object or anything like that. It's going to take care of it all for you. So it's really easy to use. And I'm kind of I'm gonna call sphere for uh, hook. There we go. Pretty much it. And we are done here actually. So just make sure that your hook holder is actually positioned where you want it to be. So maybe I can have it a little bit closer to my player. Maybe I can have it a little bit farther away. You know, just have it like in the center. Maybe have like left-handed player. I don't know. It's really up to you, but I kind of feel like this is fine. 
and you can also make this invisible so the cube is not going to be visible but the sphere which i use which is a hook actually uh is going to be visible obviously so the player is always going to see that fly and he's also going to see it in the idle status in case you don't want to edit the code a little bit and make it invisible at start so you obviously want to use a hook object for this not a sphere but <laughs> i mean if for testing purposes it's fine using a sphere as well so it shouldn't be a problem and yeah we are pretty much done here so i'm just going to go back to my player and inside of the inspector i'm going to add a new component and i'm going to search grapple and i'm going to click enter and add that component to the player so it's really important that you add the component to the player that's very important and um, you can see that there is a custom inspector created for you so it's not going to be you know asking you for a whole lot of information this is just a few fields that you have to fill out and um, I'm going to run you through these now. So first and foremost, it's really straightforward. You have a hook game object. So basically, it's your hook. So you just drag it from your hierarchy inside this field. That's pretty much it. And then next stop, it asks you for player camera game objects. So you just unfold player. And you have your main camera in here. So you just drag it and drop it. There we go. Hook fire position. So this is the hook holder. This is pretty much the hook holder. You can also call the hook holder for hook fire position, but I just called it hook holder just to make sure that you guys understand. And I don't know why I called the variable hook fire position. <laughs> I should have called it just hook, fo uh, hook holder, but you just basically drag and drop once again. It's really simple. Rope material. So this is going to be the material that you're going to be using for your line that is going to be rendered when you fire your hook. So the line is going to be rendered between the player and between the hook. So you're going to have two ends, the player, the hook, and the line is pretty much going to be acting as a rope. And if you want to use the material for it, you can go ahead and do so. And I already have a material. So I had created the material and imported a texture from Google. So you can just simply do that, or you can create your own material and your own texture, depending on how professional you want to go. But I'm, you know, obviously using for testing purposes. So I don't really, I basically straightforward don't care. So. <laughs> I'm just using this really simple material. So the finalized product here is obviously not going to look very polished because of these factors, uh, because I'm using a sphere as a hook and I'm using a rope material that's very, very simple. Um, but obviously you can make it as polished as we want to. So there are no limits. And hook return key, guys. So this is going to be the key that you want your player to press or click uh, when he's hooked onto something and he's like, well, I don't really want to fly this place anymore. So he's going to click that button and the hook is going to return to its hook holder. So you want to click this and I usually have it on mouse one, meaning mouse uh, right mouse button. So mouse one is mouse right button, mouse zero is mouse left button and mouse two is the scroll wheel when you click it. So you can actually like, you can see that it's a huge, huge list, like a wide array of keys here every single key on your keyboard. So what you can do to browse easily is basically click on M key on your keyboard. Uh, oh yeah, it takes you to M first and then you can click it once again, menu, mouse zero, mouse one. So mouse one is the one you wanna use for right mouse. You can use whatever key you want though, or button, uh, depending on what you wanna use. So you're not limited to this. Next up guys, we have hook speed. So hook speed is basically how fast the hook is going to travel once it's shot. So by default, I usually have 30 as a value. Uh, I, obviously, I do recommend you guys to actually experiment this in your game because you want to use whatever suits your game. But this is my default value and this is what fits my games uh, or my projects. So I just use this value. Player travel speed is kind of similar. Uh, this is pretty much when you actually do hook an object and your player starts traveling towards that object until it climbs up. So how fast do you want your player to travel? So I usually have 15 in this. 30 is, a, is way too much for my taste. But once again, experiment this in your game and see what fits your game. So I'm going to have 15. And then last but not least, we have maximum distance for hook. So this is going to be how far the hook can actually travel before falling off and returning to the player. So if it doesn't hook to an object, that is. So I usually have 10. So that's pretty much the simple way to go. 
And um, I recommend you once again to use these default values, but experiment these in your game um, and see what fits you the most. Hook fire sound and hook pull sounds are not required. They are not necessary. Uh, or actually, I would say they are necessary because hook fire sound is going to be played when you actually hit fire the hook or shoot the hook, whatever. And hook pull sound is going to be played when the hook is actually pulling the player towards the object that it's hooked onto. This is, however, not going to be played if the hookable object is not found. So if the hook is falling off and then coming back to the player, it's not going to be played. So, but basically the script is not going to force you to use these. Uh, so if you want to use hook sounds, you're fine with that. It's going to have a feature for that here. But if you don't want to use them, you're fine as well. So it's not going to force you. Uh, when you're done with these fields, you can click set up hook object to player and if you ever feel like coming back to this and you know editing a feature or whatever, adding a sound, whatever, you can always click once again set up hook object to player and it's going to save your changes. So when you click on set up hook object to player, you'll realize in the console there is something that pops up which says hook has been set up and is ready to be used. So this means your game is ready to be used as the hook object has been initialized. So you can play and you'll automatically realize that the hook is now following the player because it's uh, once again being positioned correctly. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So you can click on left mouse button and you can start by firing the hook and you can see that it's working properly. And you can see that the material didn't add for some reason. So. If this happens to you, I'm going to try to fix this, but if this happens to you before I do fix it, you can just click on uh, go to player and then go to your main camera and go to hook holder. So this is the object that you want to focus on. And you want to go, go down a little bit on this list and you want to find a component called line renderer. And then you just want to unfold materials and you want to set element zero to whatever material you wanted to use. In my case, it was called rope. So I'm just gonna find that and assign it and then play again. And you'll see that it's changed now to the rope uh, material. Once again, the rope material I'm using is not professional at all. <laughs> like it's actually horrible. <laughs> so if you wanna use a polished one, go for it. And you have full editing uh, or full extent of editing the material itself too. So it's not gonna limit you to anything. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So last but not least, I also want to add some hookable objects that you can actually hook onto. So I want to go to 3D object and add a cube to my scene because I'm going to use a cube for the sake of this tutorial or like a showcase, whatever. And um, I kind of just want to play around with the size a little bit. So the size doesn't matter. You can always have it as big or as small as possible or as much as you want to. Um, the scaling is not going to matter, so the script is going to work no matter what. And what you want to basically do here is you want to add a component to this cube or whatever hookable object, and you want to search hookable inside of the component menu. And click enter, and you'll have your hookable object script added. And now you can also check this can be hooked, which is really important. If you don't check this, it's not going to work out properly. So just check this and it will be fine. And um, now that this is added, I can actually play play again. And I'll just hook onto this object and you'll see me flying to it. Oh, didn't work properly. Doesn't work climbing, hold up. Mm -mm -mm. I think I was standing too close, there we go. Oh, never mind. I found the issue. Uh, hook is supposed to have the sphere collider as is trigger to or else it's going to block out the player like you saw there because it's obviously going to be just be a collision and not just a collision detection. And um, hook holder can also, oh yeah, we did have is trigger. I forgot about that. So I can just go back to play and should be working now. There we go. So I'm now climb, climbing this and it's working properly as you can see. So I can climb it again or hook onto it again. I'm going to fix this issue with the rope uh, not returning to the player after or press the leading or whatever. And um, so it's going to be fixed. Don't worry about it. But basically right now everything is working properly. As you can see, I can hook onto the object and I can jump off of it. And basically I can also duplicate this 
and just place it like a little bit of maze game or platformer perhaps like this duplicate one more and place it like this just right above each other so that i can hook onto them so i'm just playing the game again and i hook onto this i hook onto this and i hook onto this there we go so the simplicity of this is actually really really useful it's it's very efficient uh, because you're not gonna have to you know code your own system or whatever it's basically just created for you and you can see that it's working with climbing and all that so it's not gonna be a problem there and um, you can also climb down by using the hook so like that you can hook anywhere really uh, the only limit is your camera view limit so it's not gonna be a problem and you can hook anywhere you want to and if once again you can set the distance and you can set the player travel speed and all that inside of the s hook uh s grapple script sorry so it's located on your player once again and you can set these fields right here and you can also change the hook and all that so it's really fancy and it's really simple uh, i really did focus on simplicity so that's really really cool but anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you all enjoyed this little asset that i created for you guys and um, I like let me know in the comments down below if you're gonna use this actually I'm really interested and I would like to see your game if you're gonna be using this or whatever project you're creating so it's it's actually quite interesting for me and um, there's also a little documentation file so it's a PDF file and it's located inside of documentation folder which is quite obvious but it might be a little bit trouble to find it if I didn't tell you so you can check this if you want to have like a little bit more in-depth tutorial where I kind of write it out to how you can actually add this everything into your scene. But this video should be more than enough. But once again, if, you, if you're the kind of like person who likes to read, the documentation might be for you. And also there's a license agreement on the documentation, which isn't really that fancy. Like it doesn't, it sounds more scary than what it is actually. So the license is just the fact that you can use this for commercial projects, free projects, and whatever you're making. As long as you don't redistribute the asset itself, which should be quite obvious to people because that's pretty much the how most assets are actually created. So you can't just share this and that's pretty much it. But obviously feel free to use this in your commercial projects that you're going to be get, get paid for, use it in your free projects, whatever, uh, games, animations, whatever, it's really up to you and um, let me know what you think about it and leave a like if you enjoyed this video and hit subscribe if you want to stay up to tune for new videos coming up soon like this one and um, also let me know in the comments down below if you have like an asset in your mind that i should create for my channel's community and um, because i obviously like contributing to this community since you guys are contributing a lot by subscribing liking my videos and commenting um, nonetheless even viewing so you know uh, it's all appreciated and i uh, I'm just happy if I can do something in return to you because I see that you guys enjoy my videos and that's obviously the reason why you subscribe and all that but I kind of also want to feel like I'm actually paying you guys back by uh, doing something that is related to you guys so yeah that's pretty much it a little bit of emotional content right there for you but um, yeah once again guys thanks so much for watching with this video let me know in the comments down below what you think and um, I'll catch you guys later peace out this real lonely lover yep. Smoked a pack or two It never was a problem Popped a pill or two They really made him blossom yep. Take a sip, take a sip, take a sip